I've got my epoxy coat on. As you can see, it's still, I don't know, it's 50 in the shop and probably in the upper 40s, maybe 50 degrees outside here on Memorial Day. So it's, uh, someday it will warm up here in the Seattle area. So I've got the plywood laid out. What I've done is I've taken the, the, the pairs that we had laid up and I've offset them about a foot so that uh, the one on top, I'm only, I'm only going to epoxy one at a time now. So I've got the one on top. I've cut out some um, shopping bags in half. I, uh, I'm going to go try that instead of the visqueens. I don't have any clean visqueen and it's a little bit thinner. So I've got it laid out underneath the joint pair we're going to do now. And there, this top pair is offset, so I've got the flat, you know, surface of one of the panels underneath, so I don't have to go, uh, you know, put something underneath and then jack up the whole set with uh, sticker boards all the way down to keep it level. So I'll use each pair, I'll do one at a time, do this one and then flip it over and then use this one as the uh, straight edge, straight flat surface for the next pair that we do next. So what I've got was you know, all my weights and everything. And some, I got a press over here, a clamp, holding this down with some just junk wood. And then I also have over here a big aluminum box section. It's about six feet long that I have clamped to the outside two by six uh, with a couple pipe clamps underneath. And that's the nice thing about having the, the workbench made out of the two by sixes is you can uh, go through uh, these gaps and clamp things down and clamp them on the outside underneath. So I've got this uh, here to act as a true uh, straight edge that I line everything up and press it into to keep that upper edge square. On this design, it will be important that it is because uh, there will be no lofting offsets from the top edge to give you a shear curve. Uh, it will be a straight line. I uh, changed it from the original plans that had uh, the centers lower than the ends, so both the top and the bottom had a curve to them, but now they will be using straight edges to make the boat simpler. And when I made the model, uh, it looked just as good with straight edges as it did with uh, the difficult to uh, loft up curves. So okay, here I've got my edges lined up and I've got some tape across here. I've got a piece of uh, glass cloth that I tried out that will fit some scrap left over. And uh, so I'll put that on, but I, don't, I think I'll do that after I've uh, uh, glued their epoxy these together and I've come back and uh, used a cabinet scraper to scrape everything flat again. Then I'll put the cloth on. Uh, because I don't know which side this is, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, I may go ahead and put the glass on while I've got it like this and it's flat. Well, no, I won't either because I want to be able to have it flattened down. You see, I'm trying to decide how to build this as we go. Now, I'm going to go ahead and plastic it and then or put the plastic back on after I epoxy it in the, the strong back and then flatten it down. Uh, and then I will put the glass in it because I don't want to screw up the glass by having all that pressure, but I do want these things to be absolutely flat. So let me uh, go ahead and I got some clamps on the, the edges here to hold everything in place and put weights. So I'm going to mix up some epoxy and we'll come back. Well, I've got one set up higher than the other one. And so I'll come along with my toothbrush here now. And I got my System 3 silver tip all mixed up here, so I'll start going around the inside here. This is one of those things that maybe I should have. Uh, done when they were all you know, fingered together pre-epoxy. Uh, pre which you may want to do. Just uh, soak the edges and then if you got the four stacked then just set them back with layers of uh, plastic in between them. 
I'm going through now and just giving it kind of a uh, a wet out. Let the edges soak in as much of that epoxy as they can before I finally get on the last last bit. So they uh, suck it all up. I still got to pull this back to get the ends of the ones underneath the tips of those. And the pit's loose enough, a lot of this stuff, once I get it fitted again, will seep down into the cracks. This first one uh, glued up and uh, plastic bag on both sides to keep it uh, from you know getting stuck to everything. And I got my you know the strong board on top is clamped on both ends, and I got some uh, heavy weight bags in the middle to keep everything uh, uh, down. Uh, so now I'll just have to wait until tomorrow and uh, take it apart, and then I'll go ahead and clean it up, use a cabinet scraper and um, scrape that up and I'll show you what, how, whether it came out right or not. Um, it's the next day and I got all the weights and all the strong backs and everything is off of it now so I can get ready to flip. Uh, 
I'm going to go ahead and pull this blue tape up and use it later. Um, sometimes I, I think faster than what I should be doing. Uh, I'll save it because it's still usable, just hanging on the wall someplace. <laughs> fiberglass so now I'll be scratching my nose for the rest of this series um, but uh, I'm starting to pull this uh, you know just plain old cheap uh, grocery shopping bag and I'm finding something out that I've never realized before uh, I've always used visqueen and usually when you press the visqueen down on something like this uh, it'll leave a kind of a puddling effect uh, but I'm, I'm amazed at this stuff it's I believe a little bit porous so it's acting like, um, oh, I can't even remember, I just thought of it when I was standing over there. The cloth you put on, I'll think of it. And it absorbed the excess, pretty much the excess uh, epoxy. Now I'm all set up and I got a nice, nice even, there's a few voids here and there that will get filled when it gets glassed. But I'm going to go ahead now and uh, uh, I don't even think I'm going to uh, do anything to this right at the moment. I'm going to go ahead and, and flip the pair over and get the other one set up and then get it uh, epoxy together and then we'll go on from there. But uh, I will be using cheap old grocery bags from now on. I'm really impressed with the surface finish. I just wanted to show you a second here by using this strong edge, straight edge, that uh, the uh, first uh, epoxy pair is uh, straight from one end to the other and that will be critical when we lay out uh, the uh, start the lofting up so I'm happy with that. To start again I'm using my reclaimed toothbrush if you uh, when you're finished using these brushes if you uh, take and drag them over a sharp edge like the edge of a plywood or a piece of, you know, like the bench on the ends of the benches, I'll just drag it over that and get as much of the epoxy out as possible and then I set it in a uh, little container of vinegar and then bring it out and do the same thing again, drag the vinegar uh, solution over the edge of the piece of wood until it's clean again and then throw it back into the uh, vinegar container. I also use a little uh, clamp to hold the end of the brush off the bottom because after a while the uh, epoxy sediment on the bottom will mess up the brush. But you can do that two or three times depending on how uh, I guess uh, how uh, delicate the operation is. Something like this uh, is no big thing. Okay. You also notice, uh, well maybe you can't, I've got this side is clamped down hard to the uh, back brace and then I've got both of the, uh, on, on this side, the upper and the lower one, the one I'm working on now and the one I finished, I've got them clamped so that they cannot move around. Now this bag here has got some holes on it when I took it up. Put some more this queen on top so I don't Blew my board. Got all my clamps and stuff. As you can see here, everything's tied down. I can't move the two sheets are uh, squared up on all sides so that I know that they're going to be the same straight edge on the one side because we got our strong back uh, aluminum uh, beam over there holding the joints in line 
and then the top one is uh, squared up with the one that's already done so they'll be mirror images of each other so now I will go ahead and let this cure overnight and I'll come back tomorrow and separate them and then I've got to take them outside like I said before and reverse the ends because I want the long end, the bow end out here uh, and then the transom will go down there uh, but I also will probably not do any glassing of the seams inside or out uh, to strengthen these until I have, I'm finished with the, uh, the lofting of the two panels and probably I won't do the uh, fiberglass cloth to the seams uh, to the finger joints until I get them both cut out and then I'll just go ahead and just glass the part that needs to be and then not the part that doesn't need to be. So uh, save some epoxy, save some glass and uh, I'll be able to line it up a little bit better that way too and use uh, better pieces of uh, fiberglass scrap uh, as opposed to trying to find a big piece with no flaws where the panels are. So that'll uh, I guess probably have enough here for another video and we'll start again with um, um, squaring up and doing the lofting part on, on this hull. So until then, Red Barn's out.